Our next speaker, <clears throat> Marcus Enekel, uh, again, sorry for pronunciations. He leads Perigi, um, focusing on leveraging big data and AI to aid humanitarian efforts. Uh, now, Perigi develops technological solutions to improve disaster response and preparedness, and he will speak to us about big data, small insights, how to really leverage the power of AI in the context of disasters. Fascinating. Good. Marcus, please. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Marcus. I'm 33 years, uh, 39 years old, calling in from Austria. Uh, I'm wearing a gray hoodie. Um, my wife calls me Johnny Bravo whenever my hair disagrees with me. Today, I'm, I'm trying to look rather civilized. It's a pleasure to meet you all. So I'm trying to share my screen and you should see it any second. If you don't scream. So um, everything I did for the last 15 years in academia, I spent a lot of time uh, at, at Harvard Humanitarian Initiative with different humanitarian and development organizations, with the UN, with, with NGOs. The, everything I do is about forgotten crises and, and information overload. That's the reason why we call this, this, um, this call a artificial intelligence to, to end human suffering. Obviously, the global risks are increasing. That means the global complexity is increasing. Uh, not only climate-related or weather-related risks, the biggest driver of humanitarian cost is actually conflict, right? So all of these, if it's a pandemic, if it's an economic crisis, if it's food prices, it's climate weather, risks, all of these risks are individually a challenge, but they relate to other compound and cascading risks. That increases the complexity and that leads to the fact that many of the crises are not making it into New York Times headlines. And that means they become forgotten crises. I've been working clo closely with, with uh, folks at the UN and we've been looking at, at uh, humanitarian costs over, over recent years, actually much longer than that. But this gives you a very clear image of what happened over the last years, right? 2016, global request, humanitarian uh, demand of 20 billion US dollars. And in 2023, that had more than doubled, 56 billion. Whereas at the same time, the number in blue, the percentage, had decreased from a coverage of 59% to 40%. So there's definitely a gap. So the question is, what can we do as a humanitarian development assistance community to improve that? A parallel work stream that we're not right now focusing on is this early warnings for all initiative, global initiative led by the UN World Meteorological Organization, which is basically saying that we're improving early warnings to cover every person on the planet. And then there needs to be some kind of early action. That's just a tiny problem. The question is, what if you don't hear the sirens and you can't be evacuated because of that? What if you cannot read the alert? What if you're in a wheelchair and first responders don't know? What if the early warning is just too complex? It's just not clear, right? So that's becoming a dedicated work stream in the project that we call Perigee. Perigee is the closest point in the orbit of a satellite to Earth. Um, and I'll tell you all about it in the coming minutes. The problem that we're facing is in 90% of the cases, not that we don't have the data available. Just while I'm presenting this slide, within 10 seconds, you see globally around a million Google searches, 12 million WhatsApp messages are sent, and more than 45 million emails are sent, right? So there's a huge volume of data points. There's, in most cases, enough information available the problem is data don't mean actionable knowledge, right? So a large chunk of the work that we're doing at Perigee is translating data into actionable knowledge without ever assuming that any user of our systems would adjust or adapt a work stream simply because a new data set or a new insight becomes available. So first we start with understanding what the needs are, what the work streams are that are already in place, and then the joint efforts to translate data into actionable knowledge begins. So all in all, we answer three questions. What's happening? Uh, what's the impact? Who is impacted? The second question is, who actually knows and who cares about this specific emergency? 
basically exactly what different marketing organizations, marketing companies around the world are doing that will tell you if uh, Coca-Cola or Pepsi is more popular in Israel. I don't care about Coca-Cola or Pepsi. I care about who knows and who is aware of certain emergencies. And then the third question is, how can we make early warnings um, more visible and more accessible? That relates to three main groups in the development and humanitarian sector. People in programming with their feet on the ground, people in communications, and people in fundraising. And depending on the organizational structure in NGOs, in the UN, other international or national organizations or local organizations, the communications and fundraising teams are slowly growing together and, and they are also moving more hand in hand with, with the programming teams. So that's something for us to keep in mind. You might remember what happened in 2022, right? During the Oscars when Will Smith slapped Chris Rock. And the reason why I'm saying that is because one major source of information in our social analytics engines is news articles, right? The, the amount of articles that you cannot read, but you can analyze them and you can gain information out of these news articles without directly reading them, but you can let the robot read them. But there were 220,000 news articles just about this one event, one popular person slapping another, more than 200,000 news articles. In the same year, the 10 biggest crises on the African continent generated 90,000 new news articles together. I'm not saying forget about the, the, the events in Africa. I'm saying 90,000 news articles, that's a lot less than Will Smith, but that is something to keep in mind. That means we need to understand who is aware of specific emergencies, and AI can be a very powerful tool in that regard. So what we're doing is we have four modules. One is we are providing real-time emergency updates from different platforms, so you don't have to keep 25 tabs open in your browser. You can just have one web interface. This one web interface is a user-friendly modular dashboard that you can use immediately without any training, or you can do a deep dive as a pro user. You're using AI to summarize and contextualize emergency reports. Whenever there's a huge emergency, you'll get 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 emergency reports per day, in addition to hundreds of news reports and thousands and tens of thousands of, of social media articles. So we're trying to synthesize that and, and make it usable. And then we're not only measuring interest, we're predicting it. So there's a machine learning model where you click on an event and it predicts the social awareness for this particular event so, do, so that you can tailor your communication and your fundraising activities. This is just a screenshot of what the platform looks like. On your left-hand side, the events are already ranked by predicted interests. Everything is controlled by a central map. And on the bottom, you already see that there is the AI summary. And this AI summary can be adapted based on your needs. Do you care about the general insight into the, into the emergency? Do you care about a certain demographic? Do you care about health infrastructure? Do you care about understanding uh, if different emergency reports agree or disagree on a topic? That's easy to adapt for us. And then further below, you dive into all kinds of, of social analytics and, and additional data um, everything is interactive, so you can just click on things and you come back to the original source. So it's not like ChatGPT, where you, you can only hope that the, the thing will not hallucinate and give you random information, but it's actually um, taking you back to the original information that we have in our database. And so the last thing that I'd like to tell you about is an initiative that we just started. Um, if you're interested in collaborating, please reach out. We call it Earl. Um, and Earl is basically saying, okay, so there are many, many policies about early warnings, early action, but the, the actionable information related to that is still very weak. So what early warning uh, information usually does is it has a direct link to first res responders, ideally. There are some mobile apps out there, but what we've identified as a gap um, with different focus groups around the world is that uh, people with disabilities are, first of all, um, considered passive receivers of information instead of being considered active contrib contributors to what we need to know about the emergency. So if we turn people with disabilities into two-way communication channels, 
that has a huge impact on not only the disaster preparedness component, but also on the response component, because that means that we can directly inform first re responders uh, about what's happening, about the demographics, about people's needs. And at the same time, we can adapt the communication of early warnings through mobile apps to the specific needs of the recipient. AI can play a role in this, uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to. Um, if you want to reach out, if you want to test the platform, I, uh, we're a social enterprise. Uh, right now we need to cover our processing costs and our cloud infrastructure. I fully understand that no one wants to pay for any, for any platform that you haven't tested or that you haven't seen. Feel free to go to the platform. Feel free to test it. Feel free to reach out. More than happy to join forces on anything. The platform will, will launch in April um, and everyone joining before April gets the license for free. Thanks for your attention. Amazing, amazing, really fascinating and amazing. So thank you very much. Um, and okay. uh, I know there's a lot of uh, questions uh, that have come to us. And uh, of course, we will share your um, uh, presentation. And I look for further contact with you uh, uh, in weeks and months ahead. I think it's uh, fascinating.